effective immediately. I am banning Mr. Sterling for life from any association with the Clippers organization or the NBA. Groundbreaking news out of the NBA this afternoon as Commissioner Adam Silver bans Clippers owner Donald Sterling for life. Welcome to the final sports desk. I'm Kelsey Winger alongside Johnny Lombardi and Morgan Beard. Yes, Kelsey, Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling has been banned for life from the NBA in response to racist comments the league says he made in a recorded conversation. Commissioner Adam Silver said he will try to force the controversial owner to sell the Clippers. This weekend, Clippers players wore their warm-ups inside out in protest of Sterling and his comments. After Silver's press conference earlier today, New Orleans Pelicans owner Tom Benson came out with a statement of support for the NBA's young commissioner. Here's the quote from Tom Benson, in light of the serious matter facing our league, a matter that transcends sports, the New Orleans Pelicans fully support the decision made today by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and fully support his recommendations moving forward, end quote. The NBA owners need 75% support to force Sterling to sell the Clippers franchise, but Silver says he fully expects to get the league's approval. This does not close the book on a relocation of the franchise, however, possibly to Seattle, who lost the Supersonics to Oklahoma City back in 2008. Now let's get back to the world of LSU with the baseball team winning another home SEC series this weekend versus Tennessee. That's right, Kelsey. The Tigers came back for the victory Friday night, culminating in a dramatic Mark Laird walk-off base hit in extra innings. The Vols got the best of the Tigers on Saturday night in a 6-3 come-from-behind win, but the Tigers won the rubber match on Sunday and now look forward to their game versus Alcorn State tonight at 6.30 at Alex Box Stadium. And since we're all about breaking the mold here on the sports desk, we invite Mr. Shot Clock himself, Taylor Curette, to focus on a sport that goes underappreciated here at LSU. Taylor? Hop, skip, and a jump. While the track and field event may sound like a video game move, mastering the craft of the triple jump requires unparalleled skill, as LSU athletes illustrate the art of the unique sport. Outside the lines of the track and beyond the hurdles exists a track and field event that lies off the beaten path. While it may be an obscure sport, the triple jump has survived just as long as the Olympic Games. Even the LSU track and field triple jumpers acknowledge the distinctness of the sport. My coach said it and I was just like, was that English? <laughs> I've met a bunch of people who haven't known about triple jumpers. They're like, is that a long jump? I'm like, no. You just run, you do three phases, and then you're in. I just tell them to go on YouTube. Understanding the idea of the triple jump came easy for senior Lanika Pitts and sophomore Fitzroy Dunkley, but actually learning to execute it was a challenge. While mistakes may be easy to overcome on the track, Dunkley said one misstep in the triple jump could affect your entire performance, making the event that much more singular. The most important part is definitely the run. I mean, you can feel when you're off. If you go down there, and you jump, you don't have to look at the mark. You know it's not going to be a good one. Like, you don't count your steps in your head. You just know that you're at the board and it's time to jump. So it's definitely a strong rhythm to it. An effective triple jump looks more like one glide into the sand than three separate jumps, Dunkley said. But mastering the rhythm takes a good deal of practice. Let's just say those first jumps weren't pretty. <laughs> no matter how peculiar the triple jump may seem, it remains an exclusive sport. No one can just get up one day and just say, hey, I'm a triple jump. I mean, you can get up and say you're going to do 100. You might not be good at it, but you're doing it. But if you try to do a triple jump, you might get yourself hurt. Taylor Curette, Tiger TV Sports. The Tigers and Lady Tigers will try to jump their way to a strong finish in the outdoor regular season as they host the LSU Invitational in Baton Rouge on Saturday. Taylor, stay right there because it's time for another rapid-fire recap. Take it away, Johnny. All right, time to hit the ice for hockey. First of two game sixes last night. Let's get to it. Staples Center in Los Angeles, the LA Kings versus San Jose Sharks. Game six, the Kings probably the best ticket in the Staples Center right now, considering everything. It's Martin Havlat, though, the redirection, and it's a tie game, one-to-one. -one, but LA would battle back late in the third, a scramble in front of the net, and the puck controversially gets pu pushed into the net. Kings take a 2-1 lead in its late third. Andre Kopitar closes out the game on the rebound. LA Kings win the game 4-1. They've come back from a 3-0 deficit and have forced a game seven back in San Jose. Morgan to the hardwood, take it away. Time for some basketball. Battle of the Texas with Spurs and Mavs. Dallas up 2-1 in the series. We start, actually this is the Atlanta Hawks, Indiana Pacers game actually. Johnny, take it away right here with play, play. you know more than I do. And it would be the Hawks getting out to a 21 point second quarter lead, the bang three. This is Michael Scott for the Atlanta Hawks. Three again, he had five three pointers in the second quarter. The number one seed Indiana Pacers being stunned. They would come back though, it's Kyle Korver, the deep three. 
bottoms up. Kyle Korver knocks down the three. The Atlanta Hawks have a 3-2 series lead going back home to Georgia. I was expecting the Mavs Spurs there, but you know what? Pacers Hawks, probably one of the most interesting wow. series right now. One of the now. biggest shockers right now in the NBA. Exactly. Yep. Now that's how you do it, boys. Thanks to Taylor Corrette for making a special appearance on the final show of the semester. But when we return, we'll take a special look at the very best sports desk moment of the entire season. It's going down. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Well, guys, it wouldn't be a season finale without a best of montage, wouldn't it, Johnny? Absolutely not, Morgan. And here at the Sports Desk, we've compiled some of the best moments from this semester. This video has not been seen by Kelsey, so pay attention, Kels. Oh, gosh. To the first episode of the Sports Desk this semester, I'm Morgan Beard here alongside the Kelsey Winger. To my right is the resplendent Kelsey Winger and the beaming Kelsey Winger. <laughs> Johnny, take it away like you always do. The LSU baseball game? I would show you my bracket, but unfortunately, I burned it. Literally lit it on fire. Oh, so oh, bam! Look at the beer go everywhere. Oh, that beautiful beam footage, Johnny. For three and the win and onions! At the same time, we just didn't play well tonight. Well, sadly, this Lombardi Lounge has turned into a funeral as Johnny Lawrence lost the Broncos. Hey, uh, Johnny, with even more props, he continues to bring so the beer. props every week. Game three tonight, baby, in Chicago. <laughs> Let's go Hawks. Go on. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> this is PG, folks. The craziest thing you've seen in the game. Or was that it? Oh, God. That was it. That right there. I it. can't even think right now. I think that had to be. What? Watch Hashtag puppies are rainbows. LSU's winning the <laughs> SEC tournament. They're getting an automatic game. Just stop. Right oh. Sloshawa. Welcome to the St. Patrick's Day edition of... I don't know uh, what that last part was. We're gonna ignore that. salsa dancing over here. Hashtag Morgan. puppies and rainbows, though. No. That's all I know. That's all. <laughs> Kelsey, uh, you saw the clips right there. Uh, what was your favorite moment from the show this oh, past semester? Oh gosh, probably our random little dance parties before the yeah, random. We kids. love dancing. Yes, and all the vines we did. There's great. You're like a great little photographer. I'm like the, the vine man. <laughs> the vine man. Do it for the vine. Johnny, what was your favorite moment? Oh man, my favorite moment had to be. Um, Crying after the Super Bowl. Cry, yep. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was it, was it was a funeral. It was a funeral. I mean, it was a sad time, but I just don't want to talk about it. And of course, I'm going to go with the Stone Cold career oh, highlight oh, special. <laughs> you guys have no idea. Stone, baby. <laughs> yeah. You guys have no idea what was going on, but I loved it because, you know, you can't get any better than Stone Cold. But good stuff, friends. It was nice to take a trip back, you know, retrospectively and look at the great stuff we've done. But it's the last break of the entire show, and we'll shut it down for the last time when the sports desk returns right after this. It pains me to say this, but welcome back to the last ever segment of the Sports Desk. Guys, I'd be lying if I said it's not a little sad right now. I'm getting a little misty-eyed over here. It's just real sad. It's been an amazing semester, but Kelsey, senior, yep. going into the real world. I know, I know. As you guys know, I'm graduating, so here's my final goodbye, so just bear with me. Cindy and Alex, thank you guys for putting up with my endless questions and for your criticism. Even when I seemed like I wasn't very grateful for it, I was, and it helped me grow. Mom, Dad, Flora, you guys never will understand how much y'all tuning in every single week meant to me. Thank you guys for always being my biggest fans. Oh, here we go. You got it. And last, but certainly not least, Morgan and Johnny. <laughs> oh, my God. Kelsey, don't. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how you guys fed with me all semester. I wouldn't have wanted to spend my Monday nights with anyone else. I've learned so much from both of y'all, and y'all are two of the hardest workers I've ever worked with. You guys are both so incredibly talented at what y'all do. And I'm so excited to see what you guys do in the future. And Morgan, you're going to be such an amazing sports director. I wish I could be here to tell you I told you so. I wish you were here too. Johnny, I still don't believe you're a sophomore. <laughs> With how much you do and how much you've perfected the art by the play by play. Thank you. I love you both so much. And thank you guys for everything. All right. Well, you're going to probably cry a little more. Kelsey. Morgan and I got, got you a little, little bit of a gift. A little parting gift for the show. A little oh gift for God. you, Morgan <laughs> and I. From Johnny and Morgan to Kelsey Winger. Use your graduation and sports desk present. Oh, Kelsey, you. I I just gotta say, I mean, the tears right now, I'm kinda having to hold it back. Yeah. But honestly, it was great working with you. This has been the most fun I've ever had in anything Tiger TV sports desk related. And I'm just uh I hope I give you, you know, I wish you good luck with whatever you do in the rest of your life. And uh, I'm gonna miss you. Yep, you're an amazing professional and it's been an honor to work with you and you're gonna go so far in this business and can't wait to see you at the other side. Well good luck yeah. to you. Johnny and me will be back for next semester and we'll miss you like we just said. 
But this is the last episode ever for the Sports Desk. We're doing a little bit of rebrand, but we want to say thank you. Good night, everybody.